highly esteemed, world famous monk, Deva Ramita Swami. Please welcome. That little drama was entertaining, but it's also meant to get us to think more deeply about who we are and what our role is in life. Did you ever consider that it could be an easier life being a zombie? You're very focused. Your mission in life is already defined. You don't have to have any existential worries or crises. Zombies simply like to eat flesh. And so many human beings, they like to eat flesh. So let's consider the superior benefits of zombie life. Perhaps that's the way to go for current human civilization. When we look at our educational system, when we look at our family, cultural upbringing, do we see anything that really motivates us to look at the deepest levels of our life. If we're honest, we find that society rewards us for not thinking. The emphasis today is on just feeling. Just, just do it. Don't question so much. In terms of economic, financial rewards, they're not there for the deep thinkers. In fact, how can you have time to think? And should you have time to think? That's an important question. Should you have time to think? In other words, it probably is not necessary to think deeply about what is the self, what is the highest goal of life, What's the purpose of life? Is this one life all there is? Maybe it's not worth it to think about all that. Maybe you can remember times in your life when you questioned yourself. Why am I so concerned about what's the best thing to do? Why am I so concerned about what is my purpose and goal in life? Why am I so concerned about who I am? Wouldn't it be better for your instant gratification? And wouldn't it be better for your career if you just turned off that higher part of your thinking? What do you think? This is an important question. If life is all about just getting pleasing stimulations for your body and mind, well, the zombies seem to have the best deal. Their life is simple. Their life is focused. Let's consider moths for a moment. Moths do have a purpose. You just make a fire and you watch the moss fly into the fire. It's futile, it's deadly, you might say it's crazy, but still, the fact is, moths have a purpose. Similarly, zombies have a purpose. They stagger around, and they're looking to bite living human beings eat their flesh. And in that way, zombies achieve their purpose. So what is our purpose? 
We're busy marching here and there. We're busy trying to acquire. Just like the zombies. They're seeking to acquire. <laughs> We're busy pursuing happiness. And in our quest to achieve happiness, we seem to have left behind an essential part of ourselves. So much of what we do is conditioned by what's around us. Social stimulation. We get so many ideas, so many concepts, so many reasons why we should do what we're doing. Do we ever question all that conditioning? Why is it we have the ideas that we have? Can we actually turn ourselves upside down or look at ourselves in the mirror and shed all these layers of conditioning? Just think now, for example, if you happen to have been born in a different body, in a different part of the world, let's say, instead of being male, you were born female. Instead of being born in New Zealand or wherever, you were born in Mongolia. What would be different? So many of our ways of thinking and behaving depend simply on where we grew up and, and who raised us when we grew up. So is all that conditioning the real purpose? It's like you look at zombies and you wonder, are they alive or are they dead? So maybe we should think that about ourselves. Am I alive or am I dead? Or what's the difference? What makes our purpose, being so-called alive, so better than the zombie's purpose? You look at the zombies, they're very popular in the movies. <laughs> How is our life better? They stagger around and we walk very gracefully. They eat flesh. So we have a taboo against eating human flesh, but human beings, they like to eat so many kinds of animal flesh. So perhaps in that way the zombies are superior. They don't have to go to a butcher shop. So consider, please, how is our life really superior to zombie life? What do we know? What is our higher knowledge? What, our, what are the higher goals that we have? Consider how society is shaping you, molding you, filling you with certain aspirations, hopes, and dreams. And it's so difficult to separate ourselves from those aspirations, hopes, and dreams. What's a human being without a dream? We all have some vision in mind of how we should become fulfilled, what our ideal life will look like. We have some vision in our mind's eye. But maybe all that's just a bunch of rubbish. Did you ever challenge yourself in that way? Dare to question your aspirations, ambitions, and dare to find that they're all superficial. They're lacking any deep meaning. Lacking any deep connection to the real you. But you see, maybe it's, it's 
very inconvenient. And perhaps maybe it's not even healthy to think about the deep questions. It certainly doesn't seem to be good for your financial gain. When you apply to enter the uni, when you apply for a job, are you asked? Can you tell us who you are? Can you tell us why you're in this world? Can you tell us what the meaning of life is? Anyone here ever been asked such questions when you applied for some position or applied for some spot at the university? Of course, no one ever asked those questions. Then consider how can you really distinguish between the dead and the walking dead? In the prime yoga text, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives us insight into the situation we have. Krishna says, what is night for the enlightened being is day for the materialist and vice versa. What is night for the materialist is day for the transcendentalist. A transcendentalist is someone who can rise above what is temporary. Someone who can rise above what has a beginning and end. Someone who can rise above matter and the endless arrangements of matter. That's a transcendentalist, one who goes above. So those kind of persons live in a completely different dimension, even though they're physically situated in this world. When we look at those who are so unfortunate in terms of their attachment to the mundane, attachment to what has a beginning and end, attachment to matter, uh, you see that the existence is quite robot-like. Everything is about physiology and psychology. Everything is about physical stuff and mental stuff. And how do you benefit someone, supposedly? If you can offer them some physical or psychological improvement, you're considered to have benefited that person. And of course, that's what people base their definition of love on. Have you benefited my physiology? Have you benefited my psychology? Oh, it must be. It could be love. So from the viewpoint of the transcendentalist, this defining of human relationships simply on the basis of the body and mind is zombie life or the cut above that, but not human life. Human life begins when we make inquiries into what is the ultimate knowledge and what is the ultimate goal of life that the ultimate knowledge leads us to? One very famous statement from the storehouse of Vedic knowledge from ancient India. This fa very famous statement tells us in Sanskrit, Atato Brahma Gigyasa. Sanskrit is a language meant for topics of enlightenment. So this prime Sanskrit statement means now that you have a human form of life, it behooves you to focus on the question of your self-realization, your enlightenment. Now that you have a human body. In other words, 
There are so many other bodies that you could have had and have had. The yoga texts do not accept that this one life is all in all. No, Krishna will explain in Bhagavad Gita that. You've had lifetime after lifetime in different bodies, 